Today I want to work with this old book cover and I have already removed the signatures and covered the inside spine using the end pages. And now I am removing a sticker. I also sand down some of the uneven areas and then I cover everything in gesso. Now I want to create another one of my infinite journals with its own unique look and today I'm going for steampunk. Now some of my nice viewers have sent me different die cuts in the mail and those I will be using today. So thank you so very much to all of you. So here I have some gears. Some are made out of cardboard, some are made from paper and so I use either Mod Podge or Tacky Glue to add them to my cover. More in the front and less for the back. Here I am adding my weights over an old craft sheet to make everything dry nice and flat. And next I am preparing another one of my male goodies to be my focal point. I have this great die cut of a steampunk airship. I want to give it more texture using a piece from those onion or orange nets you have in your kitchen. Now these are rather resistant to glue, so weighing them down during the drying process really helps. I adjust the size a little bit and then I will set it aside until later on. First back to my journal cover, which needs another coat of black gesso. And while the background is drying, I add some white gesso here to my focal point and that will allow me to color this one in a very contrasting color. Now along with the die cut I also received a tissue paper with a stamped image of the same airship and I will use this on top of my little piece of netting and the die cut. Now the netting fits quite perfectly to the original design on the stamp so I sandwich everything together and then from here on I will do some painting and that will all be very easy to follow. So I will put all my mediums in the captions like always and I will talk to you in just a wee bit. Enjoy!
So now everything is dry and I will be adding some eyelets. I have some nice oval silver ones and I added two to the top and two to the bottom of the spine and then one on each side so I can attach a ribbon for a simple closure. I secured the end of the ribbon with a wee bit of glue and I also went ahead and added the elastic string for a simple binding. And then I added two signatures. I opted for just two because the spine is rather small but they have room for more pages. I added sturdy mixed media paper in the first signature and some drawing and sketching art paper for the second one. But of course these signatures are refillable, replaceable because they're very easy to take out of the elastic band as you can see here and that makes this type of book very versatile. I also added two black paper gears to the end of the ribbon to finish up the closure and let me give you one more detailed look all around this journal. Now, I love creating texture and the feel of it, but especially on journal covers, I like the final result to be a bit smooth and all blended well together. So these journals can be easily carried in a bag without snagging on something. So here is the front, the spine, my little label, which by the way, came to me in the mail as well. And here is the more simple back. Now this journal will be for sale eventually as well as soon as I get my store up and running and that has been a little bit delayed because of some exciting family events here at home. Alright, I hope I get to see you soon again and bye bye for now.